Hey guys, it's Surfcasting the Island, and today I'm going to be talking about how to plug striped bass from the boat as opposed to shore. I know this channel is going to primarily focus on targeting them from the open beach, inlets, and back base. So without further ado, this lecture is also going to focus on primarily top water, top water plugs, whether they're poppers or walking baits. I feel like um, key areas where that you would find striped bass staging in, um, you know, the mid spring and, you know, the beginning to the middle of the fall. And even throughout the summer, most of the time, they'll stick around those resident fish. They'll be along all the marshes, um, you know, back bays, you know, dock pilings. I'm sure you can plug. I'm sure you guys are familiar with uh, Hewlett and um, all back in there. Um, and yeah, you know, plugging the marshes is very effective from the boat it's you know i compare it a lot to freshwater it's very um technique based there's an art to presentation um how you present the lore matters because um if not you know these fish don't use logic in the sense that okay um this doesn't make sense or whatnot because this is happening they just know when something is not right um it's not presented to them in the way that they see it in nature, a wounded bait fish. So, you know, when you're retrieving a plug on top, you don't want to skip it, you know, 3,000 miles an hour because they're just, they're not gonna, they're not gonna chase something. They're not gonna put out more energy than they could take in or else they'll die. It's just the, the art of efficiency. Um, so when you're retrieving these types of plugs, you know, whether it's walking a dog or popping, you may want to pause in between, you know, that's what gets a reaction strike out of these fish. Um, so without further ado, I'll go into some of the plugs I use. So we'll go from the smaller end of the spectrum to the larger end. Um, this plug right here, this is a Rapala X-Rap Pop 07. This is something I'll typically throw when I know the fish are keen in on spearing and smaller rain bait. <clears throat> Mainly because it's obviously it's a smaller profile. This is about three inches. It's got a rattle inside of it too. Um, very effective lore, um, like I said, for mimicking bay anchovies, like I also discussed in other lectures and spearing and whatnot. Um, the only complaint I have about this plug in particular is I do recommend changing out the split rings. They're, they bend out rather easy. Um, I would up upgrade them to some, uh, you know, Spro has great ones, Owner has great split rings. Um, but yeah, it's a great plug. The way I would retrieve this is, you know, every three turns of the handle, pop it and stop and just keep repeating that. And this, this draws bites and it cools fish up to the top. Um, <clears throat> another plug that is very similar to the x wrap is the Storm Arashi. Um, I like this too. It, it, it does a great job, at, you know, mimicking rain bait as well. But more so, I would use this if there's peanut bunker around. So I'd say, you know around i don't know the summer months july august um this would be most effective as opposed to the rain bait which we would see in um may and june a lot of the time on the marsh um the same thing great plug you know retrieve every three turns of the handle give it a pop stop it um and just vary that you could do two pops and stop it reel it so you can really play your cards right, like I, you know, stress with a lot of these plugs. Um, yeah, and that pretty much covers this. Another great popper. <clears throat> these three fall under the same umbrella. I'll show you all three of them quickly. This is a Storm Chug Bug. This is great at, you know, mimicking peanut bunker and, uh, you know, smaller type of baits. Um, this is the bigger size Chug Bug. This would be more so peanuts and maybe closer to an adult size bunker that you may see in June, um, May and June. Maybe we get that mix of bait sometimes with the smaller rain bait depending on where you're fishing in Reynolds Channel. And um, this is a small, you know, this is a three, three and a half inch Tsunami Talking Popper, you know, all same profile. They have the hackles on the back treble. Um, it kind of adds you know, an extra tail and action that the fish uh, tend to key in on. It's all these three plugs are very similar in uh, retrieve. Um, even the other two I showed you, the Arashi and um, X-Wrap. But 
the main difference is colors. Obviously, these are gold and reds as opposed to silvers and browns. And obviously, the shape and presentation, which is very key for these um, fish that are on the marsh. They're not actively looking to feed. They're using the marsh for cover, so you really got to sell the bait um, that they're going to hit. And that's just the way it is. Um, it's not like fish you'd have on a moving tide with bait right in front of them all the time where they're going <clears> to <throat> constantly look to feed. Sometimes you really got to sell it to these fish, especially in the middle of the summer as opposed to the spring and fall, which might be easier to pull these fish. Now, if we're fishing the end of August and September, I know that the mullet are staging in the back. And there's going to be snappers and baby bluefish in the mix. If that's the case, I'll go to a small atom popper. This is about four inches. Very old school plug. A lot of the guys, old timers know about them. Same thing. It's got hackles on the back. Just excellent, excellent, excellent to coiling fish up onto the top. I even use this one, in the, um, especially in the bigger size in the surf, when I'm plugging spots like Long Beach and whatnot along the rocks because we get a nice mullet run, you know, August going into the first couple weeks of September and that's probably one of my favorite bites during the fall because the majority of the fall you have a lot of people on the beach with the sand eels and whatnot but you get quality fish 30 to 35 inch fish sometimes on the mullet run if you time it right and there's not a lot of guys around because a lot of guys don't fish the beginning um, especially where I live in you know the South Nassau area so that pretty much covers how you would work top water baits that have you know a cup a concave cup uh, you pop them they splash a lot of water it causes erratic action on the top but now I'm gonna move on to walking baits and honestly I like these better mainly because it tends to cool fish up that are not in active feeding zone or feeding pattern um, I don't know what it is but from my experience I could speculate it has to do with the cadence the side to side action causes the fish to look at that V wake it's giving off it's such a natural presentation there's so many spots in the back of Hewlett and whatnot that I plug you know dock lines even from the shore where it's just so effective and the first one I'm going to show you is this is a mirror lore top dog um, originally I'm going to show you a number of different models but this is um, very very effective it was actually introduced to Florida it was originally made for plugging the marshes for snook and reds but um, those types of game fish they have a lot in common in terms of how they're designed and how they're you know able to cut through the water and target bait fish and it's a very unique rattle as opposed to many of the other BBs inside of these other plugs. And if you ever work this plug, I'll have videos in the future. It has such a natural action and noise that it's unbelievable. It mimics a peanut bunker to like no end. Like I'm not even kidding. This, If I know there's peanut bunker in the area, hands down, I'm going to throw this one or the one I'm about to show you. So... On the other hand, this is a Rapala Skitter Walk. Um, same thing. I would throw the same applications to the top dog. There's not much of a difference. Um, you know, maybe if I'm fishing it at night, uh, the different shadings of the color, if we're fishing around a full moon or whatnot, I'd probably throw a brighter color like a red and the gold as opposed to the black and the gold. But other than that, they have the same rattle. You know, that one solid core. And it sounds just like a peanut bunker. You can see it's it's so torn up and you know it, it works and you could throw these plugs all year round um, from obviously the spring the summer and the fall um, but again you might want to take colors into consideration um, depending upon what bait patterns around like I said whether there's mullet or spearing or any type of rain bait or if you have a bigger bait around um, next one I'm going to show you is another mirror lure this is a mad dog um, the main difference between the mad dog and the top dog is that it has a much louder rattle. Um, this is something I would throw if the conditions were a little rougher. Uh, maybe, you know, the lighting's not as good. It's a little darker. The fish can't really make out where it is. Um, and, you know, it has that loud erratic action. Same thing. I've caught many, many fish on this plug. Um, yeah, and that pretty much covers this one 
because they have such similar actions not really much to talk about other than you know the sound they give off um this is the papa dog um this is per this was specifically made for plugging marshes and you can see it has the concave lip here that points inward um this is a hybrid bait because not only when you walk it it also spits water like it would a regular popper so I like this in quieter situations, maybe if you're fishing around the new moon as opposed to the full moon with this mad dog um, to, you know, mimic the shading, would you say? Because, you know, matching colors to the moon is all about shading. That's what the fish see as opposed to colors most of the time, I believe. Um, it just works in those quieter, low-key situations when those fish don't want a lot of erratic action that may spook them up out of the marsh where you're fishing at first light or last light. Um, and yeah, again, caught many a fish on this plug. And, you know, if the bass aren't around and you want to play around with a lot of big blues, which sometimes will happen on the marsh, you'll get on a stretch of marsh where there's all blue fish, which is all fine and dandy. Um, but I, I usually like to target bass, but it's not always going to happen if that's the case I'll, I'll pull out a bigger plug like a cotton cordell which i've mentioned in my previous lectures very effective plug for drawing blue fish i mean you get bass but you know when there's blues around this is something i'm really going to consistently throw um it's cheaper than a lot of these plugs i don't want to break off an expensive you know 15 16 17 dollar lure on you know a 10 15 pound blue fish just in my book it doesn't make sense so that pretty much covers all the plugs that I would throw along the marsh. In terms of the technique besides walking the dog, picking points is probably the most important thing when you're fishing the marsh. So you want to look for divots. Divots are best because those fish will sit on the inside of a cut in the marsh. And depending on which way the tide is going is where you're going to cast. So... If you have a point and there's an incoming tide and you're fishing, let's say, Reynolds Channel, you're going to want to fish on the east side of that point because there's going to be slack water there. So say if there is an outgoing tide, um, if there's an outgoing tide, they're going to post up on the west side of the bank if there's a point there because there's no advantage for them to sit in the cover, um, to sit in the current when the bait's coming by, it doesn't make any sense because it goes back to my point, they're expending more energy than they could put in and they could take out, would you say? Um, more often than not, a lot of the fish you're going to pull from the marsh are only going to be about, you know, 10, 15 feet off of it and closer to it. So, you know, castability makes a very big difference. If you can't get in with that 10 to 15 uh, foot range, um, you're really you're really doing yourself a disservice because... Um, Again, that's the structure fish, um, especially striped bass in general, are very structure oriented fish. And they're going to, you know, hang around ledges, cuts, dips, and rips. And there's certain spots in Reynolds Channel where you could actually see the rips um, and the depth change. And if you could put your plug, or whether you're using a bucktail, I, I like to use top water personally. It draws a lot of fish on the marsh for whatever reason. I'm pretty sure because it's shallow water. It just produces fish. If you're fishing dock lines, that's a whole different story. I don't have a lot of experience with that. I know a lot of my buddies like to throw bucktails and, you know, small mag daughters and uh, swimmers like that. But again, this is my experience. And on that note, I would like to conclude this lecture. I hope this guy, uh, I hope it helped you. Um, if you liked it, please like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you.